All right, so we are talking about hazardous waste. So hazardous waste is waste that's harmful to humans. Now you might be like, well, Ms. Frankson, all waste is harmful for the most part, which is true. Hazardous waste is just more harmful than typical waste. Um, and where does it come from? It comes from a variety of different sources. So you're going to fill in those sources below where it says hazardous waste. Okay. So manufacturing, small farms, dry cleaners. They use chemicals to clean your clothes. Auto shops, okay, batteries, lawn fertilizers, cleaning supplies, paint, anything kind of chemically, basically. Um, that we wouldn't really want to throw in the garbage. Here's a picture of all of the types of different things. Now, the majority is generated by industrial processes or industry. So, uh, small, so small farms and large farms. So I should just write. I should just write farms. Good question. Small farms are technically a little bit better, but um, all farms are generally considered to have some types of hazardous waste um, if they don't dispose of it properly, especially like if they allow the waste to build up um, in the pens or in the fenced-in areas. So we said 97% of the waste that is produced is industrial waste. So most of our hazardous waste comes from industry, from businesses. So the problems are we have a lot of these toxic metals that are going to be in these hazardous waste. And these toxic metals, um, we're going to talk more about, but I'm going to introduce you to a couple of different ones. We're going to see if we can match these toxic chemicals um, to their descriptions, OK? Pretend you didn't see that. The first, one's lead. <laughs> the first one is lead. So found in gasoline. So leaded gasoline. You might have heard leaded gasoline, right? Okay, paint, lead paint. Okay, they used to use lead in paint um, and in pipes. Okay, so lead is what we call a neurotoxin, meaning it's toxic to our nervous system, right? Our brain. Uh -oh. Released from burning coal, okay, also from gold mining, from batteries. And it accumulates in fish. Anyone know what there's a lot of in fish? Mercury, Mercury right? And we're going to talk about how it accumulates in fish in our next unit. Okay. Found in drinking water, causes organ failure and cancer, and can be used as a poison. That's arsenic. Okay. There's a play called Arsenic and Old Lace where they poison somebody. No, we're not going to watch the play. And then cadmium is found in batteries. And it's also from plastics. So these are all metals. If you notice, these are all things on the periodic table, right? Lead is PB. Mercury is HG. Arsenic is, I think, AS. Cadmium, I think it's CD. Don't quote me on that. Um, uh, yeah, after you take enough chemistry classes, you pretty much have the periodic table memorized. But um, all of these are things that naturally occur in our environment. The problem is when we have waste, we concentrate them, and they are really concentrated. And if we get too large of amounts of this stuff, it's fatal or detrimental to our health. And so arsenic especially is found naturally in groundwater. It's found in a lot of our groundwater. So that's why it's important to have it tested, have your groundwater tested, because too much of anything is not going to be good. Yeah. Uh, the material, I would, oh, I don't know if they, I would guess the material. I will have to research if they name the planet or the material first. All right, so here's the problem. Well, if you had a whole bunch of hazardous waste, you might just want to like, oh, wash it down the sink, or oh, just dig a hole in your yard and bury it, right? Because it'll be easy. Okay, well, that's a problem, because... If we contaminate the soil and the water, and then a whole bunch of people are getting sick, and their babies are being born with birth defects, mm -hmm. and people are getting cancer, this has happened a lot of places, okay? So the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, remember that's the um, authority 
or the panel set forth by the government, the group that the government, U.S. government has made, and they made RICRA, okay, Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. And it requires us to track hazardous waste from the cradle, when it's born, when it's made, to its grave, to when it dies, when it's disposed of. And the reason they did this is because if you think about it, if I'm only going to require you to tell me when you dispose of it, well, then you might just lie and tell me you actually did dispose of it, or you might lie about how much you created, right? So if I'm like, oh, you have to tell me every time you're gonna dispose of a hazardous waste, you might just lie about how much you actually created so you don't have to worry about disposing it. Or if I just make a law telling me, oh, you have to tell me every time you create hazardous waste, then you might just dispose of it however you want, right? So we wanna make sure it's disposed of in a really um, well, in a very good process, right? That's environmentally friendly. Because the problem is, is if we don't, if one state has one law, another state has another law, we could just ship our waste to another state and be like, hey, let's forget about it. But because this is for the federal government, right, we have to track it, where it's transported, how it's disposed of, all of that stuff. Well, here came the second problem. We can track all this waste, but then we have these sites that get contaminated because this wasn't always around. So what about all of this big holes and pits with hazardous chemicals? What are we gonna do about them now? Because this wasn't in place when we dug that pit and decided to bury all of that toxic chemicals. Or what happens if we get a chemical spill that we didn't expect, okay? Like the BP oil spill, and it has a ton of oil leaking into the ocean, right? We have to have a plan to clean this stuff up. So they made another act. Okay, this is again the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. This act is called CERCLA, Comprehensive Environmental Response. So we're responding to things that happen in the environment. Compensation, we're compensating people, right? So if there's damage, we can pay people for any of the damages that have been done or any of the health effects and liability, we can hold people liable or hold them responsible for whoever spilled it. So for example, with the BP oil spill, right, they're gonna respond, help clean it up, they're going to compensate any people who were negatively affected, and they're gonna hold people, like the company, responsible for cleaning it up and paying for all of these damages. This is called the Superfund Act. Now, you might think since it says the word super that it's a super thing. A super fund site is not a super thing. A super fund site is a site that's been contaminated by waste, hazardous waste. So it's a toxic site. I've decided that's too wordy. So you can just write funds the cleanup of hazardous waste sites. I don't think it adds anything to say authorize the federal government to respond to the release of substances threatening human health. So basically what it's saying here is if the substances that are spilled are threatening human health, then we can involve the government and make sure that it gets cleaned up, okay? You might ask, well, what the heck is a Superfund site? Can you give me an example? Yes, I can. Anyone heard of Love Canal? You might not have. A lot of people probably haven't. It wasn't in your lifetime, okay? So the Love Canal is one of the best known Superfund sites. And we are gonna watch a clip on this story of this hazardous site. So what I want you to pay attention to, I want you to pay attention to the health effects as a result of these toxins. So what were some of the problems with the Love Canal site? What were some of the problems? Birth defects, what else? Cancer, burns, right? All because of these toxic chemicals, okay? So this has happened in lots of different places, not just the Love Canal, but the Love Canal one is the one that got the most attention. Tomorrow, what we're gonna look at <clears throat> is we are going to look at um, super fun sites in our area. Okay, so we're going to figure out are there super fun sites in our area? 
okay? All right, so the last thing that I will, I will talk about is just bioremediation, or sorry, brownfields. We'll talk about brownfields and then we'll be done. So if you don't make the requirements for Superfund site, you are listed as a brownfield. So if you still have toxic or hazardous waste, but it's not severe enough to get Superfund status, it's considered a brownfield. Okay, so you might hear that term as well. They do get cleaned up, um, but they're less strict or less severe. It might not be as urgent um, to clean up, and there might not be as much many resources, but basically it's a way of saying, hey, here's something, it needs our attention, we're going to clean it up, but it doesn't it's not listed under the Superfund Act. Say that again? Um, yeah, they're still involved, but there aren't as many regulations on it. And there's not as much like funding. 